so this video discusses the methods of uh, single sideband signal generation so we will be discussing two uh, commonly used methods one is the selective filtering method and the other is the weavers method so in another video we have discussed uh, a third method which is the phase shift uh, based method so um, in this video we will see uh, why we use the selective filtering and the weavers method uh, generally so uh, selective filtering is the most commonly used uh, method for generating the ssb signal Th that is because it is the most uh, simplest technique of generating the ssb signal so what happens is a simple uh, you know the commonly uh, used uh, double sideband suppressed carrier signal is passed through a sharp cutoff filter to eliminate the undesired sideband so for example let's look at the double sideband the the positive uh, frequency side of a double sideband suppressed carrier signal so let's say these are the up, uh, lower and upper sidebands so the filter simply uh, removes the so it filters one of the sidebands and removes the other one so in this way we can get the single sideband uh, signal now uh, so the carrier frequency is somewhere here in the middle so uh, it passes all the components above the carrier frequency fc uh, unattenuated and rejects the or suppresses the components below fc right so that is if that is the case if we want to have a upper sideband uh, signal so if we want to have lower sideband then the uh, the uh, filter should be located somewhere here right so such an operation requires an ideal filter which is generally which is of course unrealizable but uh, we can get a good approximation in a situation where there is a gap between the uh, pass band and the stop band so uh, let's say uh, we have a signal which has the, whose low frequency components are not very important or they are not very significant so we can uh, you know have a good filtering in that case now uh, fortunately the voice signal has little content in the spectrum near the origin so the low frequency content of a voice signal is uh, already um, quite low so it's not very significant so that's why uh, if we design a filter to filter this out uh, then we do not need to have an ideal uh, transfer function for the filter so tests have shown that uh, for speed for speed signals uh, frequency components below 300 hertz are not important so uh, in other words we may suppress all speech components below 300 hertz and above 3500 hertz without significant uh, effect on the quality of the signal now the filtering of if, if we have a uh, if we can uh, remove the uh, suppress the frequencies below 300 hertz and that means the we have a total uh, spacing frequency spacing of 600 hertz we can have this much of transition region for the filter cutoff uh, which is centered at the filter center frequency centered uh, sorry the filter uh, cutoff is at fc and so uh, this allows us a 600 hertz transition region so uh, to minimize adjacent channel interference uh, the amount of attenuation on the sideband should at least be 40 db so this is the uh, generally the standard value so uh, as you can see the selective filtering method is quite uh, simple and uh, it can be implemented by just using a simple uh, filter <clears throat> now the next method is the weavers method of single sideband generation why do we need this method uh, because if we have a high frequency carrier fc uh, the ratio of the band gap that is 600 hertz as we discussed previously to the carrier frequency may be a very small right so uh, designing such a filter is generally quite difficult if the carrier frequency is high and the uh, the the cutoff region has to be only in 600 hertz so this me this puts a stringent requirement on the filter uh, so a transition of 40 db in the amplitude over 600 hertz may be very difficult 
So Weaver's method utilizes two stages of single sideband amplitude modulation. Now the first modulation is carried out by using a smaller carrier. So let's call it FC1. After low pass filtering, a larger carrier FC2 is used uh, to obtain the final single sideband modulated signal. Now the uh, block diagram of Weaver's method is shown here. So we have the message signal MT. It has a bandwidth of B hertz. Uh, the message signal is divided into two parts. Uh, both of them are given to two separate uh, um, uh, multipliers. Now we have a carrier uh, which let's say it has a, a frequency of uh, radiant frequency of omega 1. So the carrier is cos omega 1 t. Uh, we split the carrier into two parts. In one of the parts we have a phase shifter that shifts the signal by minus pi by 2 so this becomes a sinusoidal signal compared so so it becomes a sinusoidal signal compared to the carrier uh, omega 1 is generally kept low it has a low value uh, and it's equal to pi b so pi times the bandwidth of the message signal so at the output uh, we have uh, a signal at point B and at point C. So these signals are passed through low pass filters. Um, then we perform the same uh, similar multiplication again where we have cos omega 2t which has been split into two parts and given as input to the multipliers. In one of the parts we have a phase shifter. So the signal is converted into sine uh, omega 2t. The omega 2 in this case is equal to the carrier frequency at which we want to transmit and plus minus pi b. So this pi b is dependent upon the bandwidth b of the message signal. Uh, the signals at point f and g are then added or subtracted to get the single sideband modulated signal. Now in the coming slides we will go through these paths separately and then add the two signals and so we'll see graphically how this uh, complete block diagram works. So now this is the block diagram that we saw on the previous slide. Uh, at point A we have this message signal empty. It has a bandwidth of B. Uh, so at point B we can see that it has been multiplied. So we get a double sideband suppressed carrier signal at point B. Since omega 1 is very small, the multiplication frequency, so you can see that the lower side band of the positive side and the upper side band of the uh, negative side. So this is the lower side band of the positive side and upper side band of the, uh, uh, the uh, what you say, the negative side, they overlap with each other. So after point B, we have a low pass filter as we can see in the block diagram. So the low pass filter is centered such that we get these overlapping sidebands. So this is what we get at point D. This is the signal we obtain at point D. After that we can see we again multiply this signal with a, a carrier. So uh, this will again generate a double sideband suppressed carrier signal. So this frequency components now appears at a frequency of omega c plus pi b and we have the negative part of the uh, double sideband suppressed carrier as well so this is at point f which is here so uh, we have covered the upper path of this uh, block diagram now we'll cover the lower path of this block diagram in the coming slides so uh, at point a we start from point a where we have the signal mt uh, it's the <clears throat> Fourier transform of the signal, the spectral plot, you can see here. Now we multiply it with sine pi bt. So instead of cos, we have a sine. So you can see that uh, the omega 1 is the same as we had in the cos case. But since the uh, carrier is phase shifted, so we can see that the same sidebands are at an angle now. Uh, with respect to the previous case right so uh, after low pass filtering we will be taking out uh, this these sidebands the ones that are overlapping uh, they are exactly the same as we have at point b but they are phase shifted by 90 degree because we have multiplied the carrier 
uh, a different a phase shifted carrier in this case so after the low pass filtering we again perform a multiplication so we get a double sideband suppressed carrier signal where we have copies of uh, the this signal at the positive and at the negative side so this is point g now so we have covered the path from a to g in this case now in the next slide we will see that we add these two signals f plus g to get the signal h which would be our single sideband modulated signal now uh, the signals let's look at them again this was the signal in the upper path which was uh, which was denoted as uh, point f this is the signal in the lower path which is denoted as point g now if we add these two signals let's say we have f plus g you can see that uh, the uh, this component the sort of you know reddish component uh, is being subtracted from the upper reddish component so what we are left with is the blue sideband which is the upper sideband and on this side this blue um, component cancels because it's completely out of phase with the blue component of f so that's why they cancel each other and uh, as a result the prod the summation of these two f plus g gives us this signal which is a single sideband signal we also observed that we can either perform multi, uh, addition or we can also perform uh, subtraction as well so the result of subtraction is shown here so in case of subtraction the blue components of this and this they cancel out each other and the red components they add up so we get one sideband on this side uh, on at, at this point the red components cancel each other and the blue components add up to get uh, this uh, sideband so in this case we uh, also get a single sideband modulated signal so uh, in summary this uh, weaver's method as you can see is more suitable for high frequency transmission um, it it performs uh, the single sideband modulation in two stages so uh, if you have any uh, comments uh, regarding this uh, video so uh, please, please feel free to comment and also please remember to subscribe to the channel thank you